it's Ken from DYC Studios, and today I am at the Cologne Mesa at Gamescom 2023, and I have something interesting. We are at the Gamescom Asia booth, and I have Prakash with me today, and I am really excited. So, Prakash, tell me what you do at Gamescom Asia. I head the team up at Gamescom Asia, and uh, thank you, Ken, for having us here today. All right. Very cool. So, tell me, when did Gamescom Asia begin, and how did it get its start? Well, we looked at this as early as 2018, and uh, in 2019, along with GAME, uh, the German uh, Games Association, and the Singapore Tourism Board, uh, we decided that it was time to bring Gamescom to Asia, in Singapore particularly, yeah. That's really cool. Now, who should attend Gamescom Asia? Well, if you're in game development, if you're in the gaming ecosystem, that's who should attend Gamescom Asia. That's for business, but if you're, you're just a fan of gaming, we also have the B2C side, and you should attend Gamescom Asia as well. All right, now another quick question is, how many trade fair visitors did you have last year? And just kind of a round number, I think, is good. Yeah, so we, we, we had about 3,200 uh, attendees, but we just had the B2B last year. Um, we're introducing the B2C this year, and we're expecting uh, well over 20,000 fans to show up as well. So that's, that's going to be much bigger uh, this year. Very cool, very cool. Now, as a trade fair visitor, what can one expect, and what is the benefit as a trade fair visitor to attend? Well, we have the whole gaming ecosystem in Southeast Asia and around the region coming, so we have a multitude of things. We have the conference, uh, we have uh, exhibitions, we have, uh, we have exhibitor talks, we have indies. It's a whole slew of things that you know an, um, an attendee can, can hope to see. But mainly it's getting the region into Singapore and giving access to, to whoever attends to the gaming ecosystem there. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Now, if I were a trade fair visitor, trade fair visitor such as a studio, how could Gamescom Asia help me connect to the Asian market? Uh, good question. So we, we have investors, we have uh, publishers and so forth all coming through and just looking for the next big thing in games. And um, so if you're an indie or a developer looking to find these sort of uh, avenues, then it's a perfect place to come. That sounds awesome. It sounds like there's like a lot of connectivity there. I really love it. Now, I know that you guys have speakers. What kind of speakers do you feature? Well, we, spe uh, we feature speakers from Southeast Asia, but we also sp uh, feature speakers from around the region, and we make the conference as, as sort of exciting as possible, sort of a, a, a mix-up of uh, things that are happening globally, but also happening in the region. And that's why you're there, right? You want to see what's happening in the region. Yeah. All right, very cool. Now, is there any speakers or any groups coming to Gamescom Asia that you are looking forward to? Well, we have a well, we have for the B two B side of the conference. We have uh, you know companies like CD Projekt Red, so and, and a whole bunch of other speakers. You should check check out the website, check out the conference program, and, and you'll definitely see it's a it's a great mix. That sounds really exciting because I can definitely say that I am a CD Projekt Red fan. So last year, Gamescom Asia had their entertainment zone, and it consisted of two online live shows. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, Ken, so when the pandemic hit, um, we didn't want to lose touch with the audience and the fans, uh, so we decided to put, start the online shows. Uh, we have a show called Primetime, uh, which showcases trailers uh, from around the region as, uh, as well as around the world, just to keep um, fans in touch with what, uh, what's going to happen at, at, at the entertainment side. And um, we had a a day full of shows called Studio, which is uh, smaller snippets, uh, hour-long, half-an-hour shows uh, that were run at the end of the event. Yeah. That sounds really exciting. Now, how many views did that content reach? Oh yeah, we had a combined view of uh, about three million plus views, and 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 we know that's going to grow coming. As well. That's a lot of views. That's really exciting, and you guys should be very proud of that. Now, this is the first year that Gamescom Asia will have a physical entertainment zone. What can ent attendees or the public like? What can they expect from this? Right. So we um, we have multiple zones in the uh, in the entertainment zone. We obviously have. Uh, uh, publishers coming in with the games. Uh, we also have a, a retro zone. Uh, we have a board game zone. Uh, but you know, and we have an indie zone as well. But consumers and fans can can just come in and and, and 
have a great experience. That, that's, that's what we're there for. Yeah. This sounds like really exciting for the fans to come enjoy. It sounds like there's a little bit of something for everyone. I think I would nerd out personally. Now, how has Gamescom Asia changed since last year? And do you have any surprises coming up for this year? Yeah, well, the biggest change is the entertainment side. And uh, we, our uh, B2B side is or has already grown. Um, so the next next bit of this whole formula was making sure the entertainment side uh, started off. And this is what we wanted to do in 2020. But as you know, COVID hit and the pandemic uh, changed a lot of things. But the biggest and most exciting change is the start of the entertainment zone. That's amazing. And I think that is a big, huge, massive accomplishment as well, too. And I think that's going to be a game changer as well. I think the fans and the attendees will really enjoy that, getting closer to the games, connecting with the studios, and just nerding out over the all the cool stuff and, and having fun playing or listening to trailers or what have you. Very cool. Yeah. We're super excited. So I, I hope everyone who has a chance to come comes and experiences Southeast Asia, the region, and Gamescom Asia as a whole. Okay, now how many exhibitors do you expect to have at Gamescom Asia this year? Uh, we're expecting about 150 exhibitors. 150, that's really cool. Now what types of companies will be exhibiting this year at Gamescom Asia? Uh, well, we have publishers, developers, uh, service providers. It's, it's going to be uh, quite different. Uh, the whole ecosystem will be there, actually. Yeah. That's really cool. So there's going to be a lot of ways to connect and network, I would imagine. And I think that's going to be pretty awesome. Now, I know that you guys have a lot of amazing partners. Can you tell me some about some of the partner names uh, that you have for Gamescom Asia 2023? Yeah, just to name a few. Um, Capcom will be there. Um, Amazon will be there. Uh, Exola is going to be there as well. So there's a, it's a whole number of sponsors and exhibitors that are going to be joining us here. That's really cool. Now, let's say a company wants to become an official sponsor or partner of Gamescom Asia. How would they go about doing that? Yeah, just look us up. See, it's super easy to exhibit and uh, be a sponsor, send in the application forms. But um, if you're also media, you can, you can write to us. You can, you can be a, a partner or if you're an association, uh, we'll also welcome you in here. That's very cool. So if you're interested in becoming a sponsor of Gamescom Asia, you now know how you can do it. And I think that would be really great if you're a company trying to build up your name or you just want to get that bigger reach out there. Now, I have a burning question that I like to ask everybody. This is the million dollar question of the day. What was your favorite game growing up and why? Well, Ken, you know, I, I can't narrow it down to one. I, I played so many when I was a kid, right? Um, I've played the Monkey Islands, I've played the Street Fighters, I've played, played the Contras, uh, you, the smaller games like Digger, you know, <laughs> Pac-Man. You know, I've played so many, but um, I do like the, the racing sims, um, cool. and I do like Street Fighter a lot. Um, I think we all grew up with that, and um, and having Capcom with this uh, for this year, it's going to be amazing, and uh, you know, I can't be, I'm just looking forward to that. So, it's yeah. funny, because I actually bought a special edition Street Fighter shirt, uh, and I almost wore it today, but who knows, maybe I'll wear it on Friday when I'm around at Gamescom. So, man, and all those games, I was a quarter-popping nerd when I was a kid, so I can relate to all those games that you mentioned and ah oh, the driving games now I tend to wreck I do admit I'm not the best driver in the world but guys I really thought this was really special coming here and talking to Prakash about Gamescom Asia if you guys want to learn more how can they find you on social media uh, we're on Instagram on uh, Facebook um, we're on LinkedIn as well just look us up uh, Gamescom Asia you'll find us. All right, so I am going to share the links to Gamescom Asia down in the description and below. And if you guys have any questions or additional questions about Gamescom Asia, reach out, let me know in the comments, and then I can send the PR team maybe those questions, and maybe I can give you guys a little bit of answers or direct you to the right people that can answer those questions. All right, Prakash, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure meeting you. And enjoy the rest of Gamescom, and definitely enjoy Gamescom Asia if you're going to be joining. We just learned a little bit about Gamescom Asia and it sounds like it's going to be amazing conference expo and trade fair. Whether you are a consumer or the public or you are a trade fair visitor, business or studio, I think there's a little bit of something for everyone. Check the description down below for all the links and as always, happy creating.